you, Lord. You're a living God. And even today, miracles happening. All these amazing people are coming together, Lord. Incredibly inspiring people, Lord. And your children. And they're working together. And that was your last sermon on that. And you said, oh, I just pray that all my children would come under, um, under my way. In unity. So, God, I thank you for the unity that you've inspired in this conference. Thank you. 
want to say a big thank you to Elliot and Jerry. Can we just give them a round of applause? We also thank Ben from Wooderspoon Ministry. I recommend you follow him on Instagram and his friend Sam, who was the camera assistant, and he helped us. They helped us so much in recording the interviews throughout the conference. So thank you to everyone who's agreed to take part in an interview. Um, it's going to be very, very good for just promoting what we're doing and reaching more people. Um, <laughs> Very, very good. Um, yeah, so this is essentially almost the end. Asha is going to give um, our closing talk. So if you could just maybe pray for her in your minds. <laughs> um, but yeah, do you want to take her over? She's going to put her laptop um, there. Oh, I'm tired, guys. Sorry. I'm human. But yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Ooh. Give it a <laughs> And I really hope that you guys leave feeling encouraged and inspired. Um, and yeah, I'm really just, I'm so grateful to all of you here, genuinely. Very, very grateful. So thank you for being here. And thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done today Amen. and yesterday. Amen. 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 Yes. I will go for it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you said. Maybe I'm just going to go here. Um, no, actually, this is like energy. Yeah, it's. Um, bye, Ed, you're going? Bye. 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 <laughs> okay, guys. I don't know how about you, but this has been like an amazing experience. And it's been really. Magical, and I don't know, it's just like so much has happened. We've had so many people, it's been our like biggest event we've had so far. So, thank you for coming and thank you for being part of it. Um, and they are just putting my slides up on the screen. I also reached 10,000 steps right now. So, <laughs> wow. um, well, I just wanted to ask that it's not. So yes, I just wanted to ask, you know, like, I think an important question, because it can be very, like, exciting, we've been here for two days, we've had a lot of amazing conversations, um, we've met, like, super inspiring people, but tomorrow and on Monday we're going to go back into our everyday lives, and we're going to go back into our jobs, we're going to go back into our studies, and so I do think that the question maybe we should ask is like, okay, so what's next? What's after this conference? Conference. What's, what are we going to do after those talks? What are we going to do after having all those amazing one-on-ones in our special one-on-one room? Like, what's next? And so, like, I just want to ask you, like, what has challenged you during this conference? Who has challenged you during this conference? Yes, like, Maybe like, what were your goals for the conference? Some of you who came to the intro talk we did um, at the very beginning yesterday is like, oh, well, how to make the most of this conference. I asked to like, set some goals for the conference, some aspirational goal goals and some more down to earth goals. Like, did you meet those goals? Or like, like what has happened over the, those two days? And what will you do next? What will you do with those talks? with the information, with the new knowledge, with the new friendships, with the new connections, with maybe knowing about new opportunities. What will you do next? And I really want to challenge you about that. Is this maybe reading more about some of the CFI problem, uh, problem profiles that we just really encourage people to work on? Has, I don't know, have like maybe become interested in a new area that you haven't thought about before? Is it maybe signing up for the mentorship that CFI offers? which we offer like free mentorship for Christians, by Christian experts working in different fields. And we just really believe it's a powerful means of helping and equipping young Christians to go into really highly impactful careers.
So, like, you can do it literally right now, you can do it tonight, just sign up for mentorship. Or, maybe you can sign up for a retreat next year. Well, this year we've already had four, so I think we all need some break. But, we do run retreats every year. And it's an amazing time, because it's like this conference, but like, 15 people together, going somewhere into like a nice house, having some good food, and having loads of in-depth conversations. And we do have those retreats, and we, we would love to see you there. So just like, you know, look out on newsletter, and we will have more information about the retreats for next year. Yes, so maybe it is keeping up to date so that you can know about the retreats, right? So if you scan this QR code, it will take you to the CFI um, link tree, and one of the links there is linked to signing up to the newsletter. Why not do this? I think it's a great means of being up to date with everything that's happening at CFI. Um, so I will like give you 10 seconds to scan this QR code and then we're gonna go to the next slide. Okay. And maybe if you're in London this month, we are having a pretty amazing opportunity to have dinner with Nick Lane. And um, some of you might have listened to the podcast with him, and um, that's on CFI, yeah, like podcast and website. And he rarely leaves Uganda, but we have the privilege to have him in London. And so we're going to have dinner with him just outside of London, around 30 minutes from here. So please do join us for this. It's going to be amazing. Very just like casual space um, at our friend's house. So it's going to be really amazing. It's a unique opportunity to hear from Nick about his work. And now, the most important part, although every part is really important, so this is like, you know, like really, really, really important. And I would really like to come back to the intro talk and to the very beginning of yesterday where we started talking about the importance of giving radically and giving effectively. And the pledge is something that we would really like to highlight and really encourage everyone. But we don't want to just encourage you so that, you know, you do it on your own and maybe when you like struggle or have lots of questions, you have to deal with it on your own. Like, we're all thinking about this together and this community is about supporting each other in giving radically and giving effectively. And so this is something really important that I want you to know that if you have any questions about the pledge, just come talk to us like talk to the team, talk to some of, some people here who have already taken the pledge and are giving both radically and really, really effectively. And so on every table, so easy, there's like a QR code to learn more about the, we have a partnership with Giving What We Can, where you can take the pledge and um, it, you'd be like part of the Christians for Impact team. And I also want to highlight that, I mean, like, look at me, I just graduated, let's be honest, I don't really earn a lot of money. I rarely, like, barely earn, right? What I need to say is that you don't have to take the 10% pledge and, like, commit to the gift throughout your whole life. You can take the trial pledge, and I think it's a really unique opportunity as we, like, kind of young professionals thinking about how to deal with our finances to really consider taking the trial pledge. And it's a custom pledge, so you can take 1% or you can take 3%. And you can start thinking how to deal with your finances and how to include the effective giving in your, I don't know, budget allocations. And I think it's also a great learning opportunity um, for how to manage our resources. So again, you have the QR code here and uh, you have the QR code on your tables if you'd like to learn more about the pledge. And again, there are two types of pledges, the 10% pledge that you can take for life, or you can take the custom trial pledge, and you can decide on the, the also like time period for how long you would like to try out the trial pledge. And so I really encourage everyone really to try it out and see how it goes and to talk about this. It's, I don't know, like giving financially is sometimes something that maybe we don't feel comfortable to talk about, or there aren't that many spaces where we can do so. But I would really like to point out that this is exactly the space where we talk about those things. Um, so feel very welcome and encouraged to have those conversations. And I would like to just ask three people 
um, to share why they give, literally for 30 seconds. First, maybe Alex. The more I asked them, which is like three minutes ago, so they don't. <laughs> Yeah, hey everyone, I'm Alex. I took the Give What We Can Tencent Pledge back in 2015 when I was at university. I think I was really drawn by the idea. I think nearly everything we do is best learned in community. And back then, I think it was just about 1,000 people had taken the pledge. Now it's up to 9,000 odd. I think it was a real joy to me to be able to do something, make a big, lofty commitment for the rest of my life to give 10% to do as, and hopefully more as well. And I think the thing I was particularly excited about was its focus on effectiveness. In a way, we can Give, like, we can make our money go much, much further if we find the very, very best charities and make sure we give to those rather than ones which are really good but not the very best. And um, yeah, to me that was an incredibly exciting thing to do that to community, but also community really committing to, to look for effective opportunities to do. So it's been one of the best things I can say after following Jesus, thinking and giving what we can, 10% pledge is, is the best thing we've ever done. So um, maybe it could be the best thing, second best thing that we do as well. Thank you. Um, Sydney? Hi, I'm Sydney. Um, a couple of years ago, I started out by taking the trial pledge, um, then I upgraded later once my salary was a little bit higher to the 10% pledge. Um, it started out of a sense of duty for me. I felt like I had been blessed to be born in a wealthy country, have access to education, stable food and housing, but it's consistently been one of the most fulfilling things I've done with my life. Um, I've met a lot of people who aren't only trying to do good, they're trying to figure out how to do the best that they absolutely can. To me, uh, the giving what we can pledge, giving what we can pledge, um, it's not just about trying to do good in the world, it's taking yourself really seriously, taking your ability to do good seriously, and try, trying to do the absolute best you can. Um, I highly recommend starting with the trial pledge, and going on from there, I think you will continue to do it. Thank you, and Oli. Um, yeah, why, why should we be radically generous? Uh, I mean, just look at the Bible, really. Um, we've got the, uh, the widow with her two coins who gave all she had. Uh, and I really think we should, yeah, we should take that into account. So um, I think as Christians, we should be really spearheading what generosity looks like. Uh, and in some sense, I actually don't really like the giving what we can pledge because it's, it's 10%. And I actually think giving is, is sacrificial and 10% isn't always that sacrificial. Um, so, you know, can we be giving 30%, 20%, and um, really encourage you to actually be challenged. Can we as be Christians raising the bar even further and do this? There's a nice more man with 10%. <laughs> Look at that. Um, so, and I think it's biblical, and it's going to hurt, it's going to be sacrificial, but I do think we can afford it. Um, and especially, lots of us uh, uh, aren't married, don't have kids, uh, and I think then we really can be giving higher amounts, and as our income increases, then just uh, that our, um, not our living standards increase, uh, but our kind of giving standards. Thank you so much. So, I do hope that, I mean, I don't know, these are real people, like having real lives, also trying to give um, effectively and generously. So, I do hope that like, it encourages you and hopefully the community can equip you if you one day decide to take either the trial or the 10% pledge. Um, yes, and now I just wanted to say like a big, big thank you to, well, first of all, you guys for attending. It's been amazing to have you here, to have you here, to meet many new faces. So thank you for also saying hi. I really wanted to say thank you to all our volunteers. Can you imagine? We had like 22 volunteers this year. We had many more people who wanted to volunteer, but we were like, well, I think 22 is. Well enough. So thank you. Can we just like give a big applause for all the volunteers? And on Thursday we had like a big prep night, so they also like yeah started helping us a little bit earlier. So thank you for this. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to steal the mic. There's always a danger where lots of people have done the absolute most work involved in a conference like this don't get acknowledged. So um Behind me, we are four of the board members for Christian for Impact. Um, we get the joy of meeting regularly um, and trying to support the amazing team with CFI, doing all that they do. And um, I'm a bit of a Christian for Impact conference junkie. I think I've been to every possible CFI conference I could go to. And every time they get bigger and better and more exciting, um, JD, who isn't with us, 
here today. Um, we were, uh, we're out in DC in May for the US Women's Conference, some of us were there, and JD asked us, oh, that was great, wasn't it? Maybe we should do another one. And I was like, yeah, maybe another one, like next year, a year's time. So I was like, let's do it in November. And then he's like, let's try and get the Archbishop of Canterbury to come to me. And I was like, oh, JD, that's a lovely idea. <laughs> let's not get our hopes up too far. And then um, you guys turn around, and, and suddenly we have Rory Stewart and the Archbishop of Canterbury speaking to us. And loads of other incredible speakers. And um, so I guess this is a small tip of the iceberg of all the work that you've done here, and we're incredibly thankful as um, uh, the board members. And so yeah, can we give a massive, massive round of applause to the team? And those who have been out there, I love you
two more minutes. Father in heaven, 